the weekly feed. I'm Kyle Meredith, uh, sitting with Jake and Scott of Wax Fang, who I guess uh, are just returning to Earth from a long uh, time out. Is that right? It's good to be back. <laughs> it's pretty heavy. Yeah. Pretty, pretty heavy place. We, we've all missed you. We, we like being missed. <laughs> it's the gravity, right? It's yeah. The gravity. See, it, always, it always brings you back to the ground. Yeah. So this is a this is awesome. You guys have kind of done. I mean, it's I guess it's the biggest thing in your career uh, so far with, with the astronaut. This new rock opera, space rock, prog opera. I mean, what are you calling it? What are you calling it? Uh, we're calling it a space rock opera. Yeah, not so much like Thirty Rock, which would be the opera. Correct. <laughs> you can do that. Uh, it's funny though because I feel like I mean, you're a band who's kind of always had a bit of a quirk to your sound, a quirk. But this it ends up being maybe the weirdest thing you've ever done, and it makes you kind of the most famous, and gets the most like uh, widespread acclaim than I think anything else you've ever done before this. Yeah, well, you know, we we're quirky guys, and uh, uh, one could say the astronaut is just a series of quirks, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Or or quarks. Quarks. <laughs> Well, give me this setup here. How did this start? Uh, let, let, let's get the story behind the astronaut before we launch into it. So, wh where does this have its beginnings? Because I, I know this. I, I've heard this goes kind of far back. It does. I don't know if you remember, but yeah, I was going to say you're going to take it all the way. We're taking it all the way take back. Take it all the way back. Back. Time you, you, traveling. You want to take it back? Or you yeah, take you it take back? it back. Okay. Well, Jacob and I used to, um, and our friends would um, back in the day get together and and make music together, and we would record it all on cassette tapes. And we'd burn through a 45-minute side of a tape and then take a break and then come back in and do the other side. And on one afternoon, we're in my sister's bedroom at my parents' old house in Hikes Point, the house I grew up in. And uh, we recorded a bunch of music. And uh, I dug this tape up several years later and came across what, sh what would become the opening riff to The Astronaut Part 1. Mm -hmm. And uh, on that tape, it was originally called The Acrobat Captured in Flight. Okay. Don't know. Don't know what was going on there, but uh, so the acrobat drugs, yeah. drugs what's going on there. <laughs> the, an ast the astronaut could it's some form of acrobatics, sure, for yeah. sure, yeah. So, so it makes yeah. sense. And then the and uh, so then we were playing around with it, and uh, it became this sprawling seventeen-minute right. song, and uh, and we changed the name from the acrobat to the astronaut to make it about space. Yeah. Because who doesn't like space, right? Exactly. Well, I mean, exactly. I mean, I guess that's what it comes to. Because right now, it seems like even a, even more interesting time for this to come out. I mean, there's always some kind of love for space. We've always had it. It's always been there. But right now, I mean, you you you've got the you know the movies getting the uh, the Oscars with uh, Sandra Bullock. I mean, that's happening. Right. Uh, I feel like there's uh, some things that just coincidentally are happening in the news with Stephen Hawking denouncing black holes suddenly. Right. I saw that. Right. Yeah. And, of course, and that comes out the week of our release. Right. <laughs> Black holes aren't real, all right? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> there goes your whole story, buddy. <laughs> yeah. And and then I just read today, too, they, they think, there's a theory, they think they've solved teleportation. Wow. Yeah. It has something to do with, uh, like, two um, two things being able to exist in the same spot, and somehow, because of that, you can move it around. So, I'd, it's a theory. I'd be very interested to yeah. re read that theory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's in, it is interesting timing, and also with the sort of like government defunding of NASA, mm -hmm. that it's you know NASA was always kind of our like flagship, you know, sort of branch of technology within the government, and now what is it going to become right. without our precious tax dollars? Yeah, personally, I would rather my money go to something like that than to than fighting a war. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, and I mean the the privatization of space travel and you know how you can only take a trip if you've got tons of money and i mean that's how i guess most pioneering adventures usually start out because yeah. you got to have the resources to be the first but um yeah it's it's just bizarre to to look and see you know that there's this international space station where you know people are just coming and going and right. living for months and <laughs> just uh definitely feels like as a child that was futuristic, and it's here sooner than I than yeah. I thought. So. I mean, how you guys, is space something you guys are actually interested in? Because on one side, this could be just the story you came up with. It just happened to be about space. But did you guys have like this big thing about space beforehand? Um, it's a little bit of both. I mean, I think we're you know, as people with curious minds and artists, we're certainly interested in outer space sure. um, and what it might mean, and an uh 
you know you can interpret that any way you wish but uh as far as like some kind of innate interest in astrology yeah. or astronomy mm. or even mm. science fiction you know yeah. it's like sure it's it's very interesting right are we super into it mm, not necessarily not so much space nerds yeah, yeah you wouldn't tell that by the flight suits <laughs> we're wearing <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think like more on just a metaphysical and philosophical level, um, it becomes interesting just because it's always it's always that thing that, you know, as humans, we, we can't fathom infinity. Right. You know, and, right. and just even when you start to think about space, um, just as a as space, um, I think that's where it just probably where our interests more more philosophical like sure metaphysical yes i mean I, I would go i think it would be interesting to see and and feel mm-hmm. even after this storyline yeah and the possibilities yeah yeah i mean it definitely is terrifying sure um in space no one can hear you maybe, scream <laughs> maybe i wouldn't go <laughs> I'm not going to space. <laughs> It'd be scary. I, yeah, I, I mean, you might have to go one day. Yeah, yeah. unless that's I'm true. on like the same rocket as Elon Musk, because he's not going to get on a rocket that's going to kill him. That's true. So yeah. I would get on that rocket. Right. So when you guys were writing this, though, was there anything? Did you ever use anything else as an example? I mean, I I, I don't know that you would have to. There's a lot of great concept records out there. Mm-hmm. You kind of. I mean, was there ever a point you got stuck and you said, "Well, how did they do it?" Not necessarily. I mean, it all flowed very naturally, as uh, compositionally speaking. Mm-hmm. So there was never really any moments where we were sitting around scratching our heads, trying to think of what to do, except when we initially started out. Yeah. Um, you know, when we started part one, there was there was the uh, um, the cassette tape that kind of started it, and you know, it, it kind of guided us in a certain direction. And then when we decided to carry it on to the astronaut part two and what became part three mm-hmm. um it's just we just kind of set up shop and jammed because there, there was also an alternate story for a minute right that there was an actual alien <laughs> there was yeah the original story was that um our hero would be deposited on a hostile alien planet yeah. where um he was going to be pursued by this species of alien and it, it was all very avatarish. <laughs> yeah we um, we ixnayed that yeah. well, um we were talking off camera and everything, like uh, the alien makes or breaks the movie. So it's if true. you had yeah. an alien, it could have ruined exactly. the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. And it also just opened up, you know, I think, you know, I want, we wanted to do something conceptual and something with a story, but we didn't want it to be really story driven. We just kind of mm-hmm. wanted to give people, you know, have enough bare bones where people could use their imaginations to fill in the blanks yeah. and it could become something, you know, of their own. Yeah. Like a choose your own adventure. <laughs> a little more open ended. <laughs> yes. Bring. You have exactly. that at the end of each track. Bring. <laughs> yes. You know, something like that. Uh, so, going back though, I- I've noticed, Scott, especially in you, your vocals have changed quite a lot from like the last full length record with, with La La Land. Uh, to now, had you been working on that any? Because I can hear changes, and you can even hear it in part one versus part three too. Like you're doing something different with your voice. Um, you know, I wish I could say yes. I I spend a lot of time working on it, but the fact of the matter is, I don't really work on it very yeah. much at yeah. all. Um, what you're probably hearing is the span of you know two years between the time right. Astronaut Part One was recorded and Part Two that and you know different signal chains Mm -hmm. being used in the recording process and uh you know a little bit of age and i think also i think even just contextually with the music that you're just it was sort of reacting to you know this is this is the part of the story this is the the feeling of the music at this point and and this vocal styling kind of fits a little more Mm -hmm. but it wasn't ever really consciously talked about like try and sing differently right you know you were just feeling it. Yeah. Well, you know, and part one was definitely more, there was more of a sort of sense of desperation where part, the, uh, the rest of the story is this more urgent sort of um, almost uh, trying to convey the sort of just horrificness of the situation <laughs> right. and the, the pain of being, you know, atomized and reassembled which i'm i'm guessing you know plenty about <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> how that feels i do it's t- it's terrible uh the other layers of wax fang i know there's other stuff going on besides the astronaut uh besides the series of singles last year there was also the, uh, the big 
TV thing. You ended yeah. up on a, a big episode of American Dad. It was a, a anniversary episode, right? It was the 150th episode yeah. of the show. And they used, uh, I know, Majestic, uh, mm-hmm. one of your older songs. Uh, what did that do for you guys? Did, I mean, did, did that open up any doors that weren't open before, or was it just something that's cool? It's a lot of bands don't get that kind of experience. Right. Sure. I mean, sure, yeah, it opened all kinds of doors as far as, you know, gaining a wider audience mm-hmm. and um, just um, grabbing the attention of people that would have never heard of our music you right. know that, you know prime time on a sunday is, yeah. is kind of a big well it, you know, it's even beyond like having your song placed it's having your song as part of the story as something yeah, the character is definitely it was you know, you know it was written into the show and yeah. then the whole scene is sort of centered around that song which was you know of course extremely flattering right um but yeah um, it hasn't necessarily opened any more of that kind of work per se but i think we're seeing a lot of you know a lot more activity yeah. um yeah i'd say know. Definitely some new fans, yeah, know, yeah, new exposure and people sort of writing in and saying, I heard you on American Dad and I checked out the rest of the catalog and it's great. Yeah. So. And it is. Because <laughs> there's, there's also, you, you, it's kind of been a single series going on. You had the blonde leading the blonde. Mm-hmm. You have Data Hearts are made for beating. Mm-hmm. Do we expect more of that in 2014? Is uh, that We've in got the a few other songs uh, in, the in the bag. Things yeah. in the bag. Um, and might it, creep out. Does it continue though as a single series? Do you guys have like the full something planned now that the astronauts out of the way? That's, um, that's being worked on yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. So I feel like we're always kind of working on simultaneous yeah. groups of ideas and you know, yeah. different we have different bags. Yes. What's that? That's always the question though. Cool, your release is out. What are you doing next? Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> But uh, yeah. Wax Fang, you've always given us something pretty awesome every single time. So thank you for that, and can't wait to see what happens next. Thank awesome. you. Thank All you. Right.